If someone on LinkedIn or YouTube has tried to convince you that OpenAI's new agent builder is a game changer and will take over and kill platforms like NADN and Zapier, I'm sorry to say, but they've been lying to you. In this video, I am not gonna teach you how to use this feature, but I'm also gonna show you why you shouldn't care about this feature and how a lot of the micro elements of this workflow builder are actually derived from prior products from OpenAI that they've abandoned in the past. So by the end of this short video, I hope to convince you to steer clear of even tinkering or using this platform until we see whether or not they're really gonna invest this time and make it something that is somewhat comparable to the specialists in automation that we've been using for the past 12 to 18 months. Let's dive in. So in case you haven't seen it, this is what the platform looks like. If you go into platform.openai.com and navigate to Agent Builder on the left, you'll be greeted by this creative workflow. And very ironically, you have companies like NADN, Zapier, Lindy, Google with their new Opal product, and even VoiceFlow, which is very similar in terms of the design, all offering natural language ways to create workflows and agentic workflows. Whereas with OpenAI, one of the providers of the models that would allow them to even do that doesn't have a natural language interface that would allow you to interact with building these workflows. So just from the get go, they haven't even integrated a feature that is native and would be something that they would have an advantage in implementing from day one. Now, just in case you haven't seen this, you have an infinite canvas along with all of these different puzzle pieces and nodes that you can combine together to create workflows. And when it comes to something like the AI agent, which is very similar to NADN, you have the ability to create a name for it, add instructions and a prompt. They import their older feature in the OpenAI Playground to automate writing the prompt, which yes, does help you write faster. And then you can reference variables like workflow as an input. So this is your input variable. And then in terms of the bells and whistles, you can do things like include chat history, pick a model, now, only OpenAI models, unlike these other platforms that let you choose whatever models fit best for your specific use case. You can control reasoning, add tools. All of this stuff right here has already existed for a while. And if you go to more, you can control other things like verbosity, summarization, and some UI elements here and there. But the main idea is they've added some interesting features like guardrails, where it helps with things like jailbreaking, hallucination, moderation, and filtering PII. But honestly, a lot of these useful things are things that specialist platforms like the NADNs and Zapiers and Make.coms of the world can just adapt to their existing, already flourishing automation platforms. Now, in terms of the things that I find really clunky is to actually have a conversation with your workflow. You have to go to this preview where you say something like hi, and then when you go through the workflow, it will just highlight very briefly which node is running. You don't really have too much metadata once it actually runs. So right now you get to see a little bit of a preview of what it's happening on the reasoning step and how it's going through its different prompts and user prompts. Then once this goes through the process, it'll come back with some form of response. And this is your response ID. If you want to click on this, you'd have to go to their platform to be able to see the actual execution and follow along. And if we return back, it'll go through, it'll tell you it went through in this case, the if node and comes back with the ultimate response. But unlike the other automation platforms, you don't have a way to natively just click on a node, see what happened and see exactly the execution node by node. So you can take a look at the holistic picture of the automation you've put together. Now, if we go to the AI agent, I will show you exactly how they've adapted things that have failed in the past. So if you go into the tools, one of the multiple tools that you can use is file search. And while some people might think this is brand new, this has existed since OpenAI came up with what's called the Assistance API back in 2023, 2024, where even that product they said would be their agentic mega product. So we, myself, used it at my agency, Prompt Advisors, to build all kinds of AI agents, chatbots, anything that we could do with something like VoiceFlow. And over time, they didn't really invest in the infrastructure. Any of the bugs that lingered with the Assistance API the costs, the accumulating tokens, the hallucination with misfiring on tools all lingered. So eventually, if I go to this screen, they announced earlier this year that they were going to deprecate the assistance API completely. Now the assistance API has existed for the past few years. And if you go into the exact same portal, right under agent builder, you'll find it right here at the bottom. And this is what it looks like, where on the left hand side, you put a name, system instructions, and voila, you now have this generate prompt feature that's already existed. You can pick a model, 
But in this case, at least you can select fine tune models that you've done and used before. And then you can add things like functions, quote interpreter, you can control the response and add tools. Now, if we go back to the agent builder and we click on select vector store, it's going to take you to this existing vector store that again has existed for a while where you can control the chunking to a certain degree, but not very granularly. So this also is a recycling of an existing feature. So if you go into files and you upload a file here, you'll be able to go to the exact same place to either create or select a vector store. And while the reasoning models have evolved to be able to adapt and work with this kind of file structure better, the underlying infrastructure of the vector database that's controlling this rag function hasn't actually improved at all. They've just repurposed what they were going to deprecate and now moved on to what's called the responses API and basically shoved that into this workflow builder. And if you keep diving into the UI, you'll see even more artifacts like evaluate that aren't brand new. They have already existed for almost the last year. And if you go back into the assistance playground and click on evaluation and you click on create, there was not only one evaluation, but many ways to actually control and audit your evaluations in the agent builder itself. It only gives you one. And while some of these features are cool in the guardrails or the evaluation feature, what do you think that a specialist platform like NADN that just raised a half a billion dollars would do if it even minorly competed with it? All they'd have to do is just build this into their own platform. And now they would be on equal parity for this feature, but everything else in terms of the robustness, the testing, the scale, the malleability, everything here is completely in alpha. I wouldn't even call this a beta. And the big worry of mine is, is that you spend time learning this instead of just learning automation and learning the concepts and working with tried and true platforms. I don't hire a plumber to paint my walls and I don't hire a painter to clear my sinks. So when you have a platform like OpenAI that's freshly come off a major failure in releasing GPT-5 into the world and not having that well received, they've now gone off on another side quest and another side quest that they may or may not continue to build on. Because if it looks like anything like the assistance API, which at the time they said would be the future of AI agents, that future came to a short stop within 12 to 24 months. So instead of investing your time learning how to make this work to build your workflows, go and learn a proper tool that's still going to be around. And while I love ChatGPT and I love other things that OpenAI has put out and some of the models out there, I would say that this is very distracting and this is trying to be everything to everyone. And what happens is when you attempt to do that, especially in generative AI, you end up being not as deep, and not offering breadth to anyone. So despite what you might hear, this platform is cute, but is by no means no measure robust nor stable. If you found this video helpful, then please let me know down in the comments below. Helps the video, helps the channel, helps avoid more people seeing more clickbait stuff and hopefully seeing things that actually matter and are realistic for their day-to-day -day workflows. I'll see you in the next one.